Oh, okay, so now moving to the origin of the moon. Um, there were four main hypotheses for how the moon, our moon, or any moon in general could form. So these hypotheses are kind of relevant for considering where did any moon come from. Um, the first one is called the fission hypothesis, which means that the moon sort of calved off from the earth, that it just spontaneously tore off of earth's surface. Um, the sister hypothesis says that the moon formed around the earth in the same way that the planets formed around the sun by some sort of uh, accretion from some sort of ring uh, as the earth formed. The capture hypothesis says that earth's gravity caught the moon that it was formed somewhere else and then happened to be you know traveling our direction and then got captured by earth's gravity. And then the giant impact hypothesis posits that the moon coalesced after a giant impact. So diving into a little bit more detail on what that giant impact would have looked like. Um, the idea is that there would have been a Mars sized impactor called Theia. And as this impacted the earth, it um, basically threw material off of earth's surface, uh, which formed a disc of debris around the earth. Uh, this is different from the other hypothesis, the sister hypothesis, because in the sister hypothesis, that disc would have formed in place early in the Earth's history. But in the giant impact hypothesis, it's formed by the material from the impactor and from the Earth. So anyway, this disc of debris then eventually coalesces into the moon. So in order to investigate these hypotheses and figure out which one might be correct, we need to look at all the available evidence. And so part of that evidence is the structure and composition of the moon. Okay, so in our activity, we looked at the idea that the, you know, the moon and earth could have different compositions. They could have different fractions of metal versus mantle versus rock. And uh, the textbook section that you looked at mentions that the impacting body would have only contributed mostly its mantle to the new moon. And the earth would have also contributed mostly mantle material. And so for that reason, the moon ends up having a very small core um, relative to other planets. So uh, that's consistent with the giant impact hypothesis as it's described in the textbook. But I just wanna mention the textbook um, discussion is not necessarily the final word on the formation process of the moon. So I'm gonna share with you, this is a New York Times article from I think 2019 um, that talks about some researchers doing modeling similar to the simulation you just used, um, but actually considering also the uh, motion of the planets, uh, the motion of the impactor. And if you, if the impact happened very early in Earth's history while it was still molten, it could have essentially splashed up magma from that young Earth, and that magma would have been mostly what made the moon. So that would have been mostly mantle material. If it happened later in the Earth's history, then it would have broken the planet into various pieces, which then recoalesced. That's the process that your textbook describes. So, you know, there's, there's not, um, there's not the, a final word on this at the moment. Okay, um, but researchers who do this type of work that do simulations to try to figure out how the moon formed, um, they find that if it happened early in the Earth's history, like this article mentions, it reproduces what we notice about the moon, which is, is that it rotates at the same rate as it um, orbits. And so for that reason, the same face is always facing Earth. This effect happens for other moons as well. It's called tidal locking, but it doesn't happen for all moons. And so whether or not a body is tidally locked depends on the history of the moon and the planet. Um, so it's the tidal locking that we observe is possible with this older, um, you know, splash of magma idea. All right, so all of these things that we observe, the density, composition, the tidal locking, those are all related to the moon's origin story. So basically all of this is important evidence for us to consider. <laughs> 